Joining me for this segment is Cody Hasterman. Hi, how are you doing? Great. Good to see you, man. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> we say that as if we haven't just spent the last three days together. <laughs> so this segment, we wanted to have a look at the integration between the Pure Storage Array and VMware's vSphere, uh, vRealize automation. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. What have you got for us? Yeah, so um, to integrate with vRealize automation, it's you can't really talk about VRA and storage as a service or anything as a service without talking about vRealize Orchestrator a little bit first, right? All, all the infrastructure as a service, XAAS as they refer to it as, is all built on vRealize Orchestrator, right? So let's look at that first and then we'll dive into vRealize automation. Okay, cool. Cool. All right, so let's, um, of course, bring up the, the VRO interface. So vRealize Orchestrator, for those not familiar, um, is a tool that's included in your vCenter license, right? So it's free, I guess. If you bought vCenter, right? It's apparently one of the hidden gems that yes. almost nobody uses. Exactly, exactly. And, and we hope to change that. Uh, it's essentially an orchestration tool, right? It's a GUI-based scripting engine. Um, and there's a variety of ways to connect your infrastructure, right? If you go into the, the workflow section of the, the tool here, you can see there's, you know, REST API, SSH, SOAP, Active Directory, right? I mean, there's pretty much anything, any way to connect to your infrastructure, your switches, your storage, you can, you can do it in VRO. Now, building VRO, um, workflows sometimes take some effort. You know, you need some JavaScript and so forth. And so mm. one of the things that we've done is uh, to help our customers not have to do that and understand the kind of how to build workflows with JavaScript is a plugin. Right. So um, they can work with objects rather than working with, with very uh, convoluted code. Exactly, exactly. Just uh, run the workflow, enter in the, hey, this volume object, or this, like, just like you'd manage a data store or VM or something like that, they can now uh, manage a flash array volume or something. Like that, right. Right. And so, that's what we did is put out, put out a, a plugin. So in the plugin, we'll see there's a variety of workflows in here um, that exist to manage the flash array, right? So uh, creating snapshots, creating what we call protection groups, consistency groups, you know, um, creating volumes, of course, uh, managing, deleting, and of course, some VM we're integrated with. Because most of the customers using the flash array and VRO are also the basic using, yeah, exactly, using VMware as well. You know, creating data stores, snapshots of them, restoring, um, creating provisioning groups on our array, uh, that type of stuff, right? They're built into, to the, um, into the, the plugin. Exactly, into the plugin. And the nice thing about VRO plugins, right, is it's not just a collection of workflows that you can run, it's um, kind of a development environment, right? So these custom objects are included in the JavaScript libraries, right? So if you want to start building custom things, you can. If you want to edit these, like, I want this workflow every time it runs to not only create the data store, but, you know, send an email to Sally or something like that, you, you can add that in, right? Yeah, send the updates into my CMDB if I'm doing those kinds of uh, Ex exactly, joyous... Exactly, exactly. That's probably a little better example of mine but, than mine, <laughs> but, you know, whatever, right? Um, and so there's some cool stuff around that. And also there's concept around actions, right, inside of VRO. So if you want to build your own workflows, we have a whole bunch of actions that are built into the product that you can assemble, right? Drag and drop, you know, create mm -hmm. volume, connect volume to host, rescan, you know, that type of stuff. Or you can actually go into it and use the, the scriptable objects and stuff to, to really get into it. But really the base behind it is um, having these workflows available to customers who just want to run them to cover 80% of the use cases probably mm -hmm. um, without really having to build anything custom. And, and of course, what you mentioned, the objects, right? That's really the crux of it. And that's really what connects VRO to VRA with infrastructure mm -hmm. as a service. And that's what really makes it useful. And so when you register a flash array, for instance, you'll see all your volumes, you'll see your snapshots if you have any on these vol on these volumes. And these are custom object types, right? Yeah. When we install the plugin to VRO, uh, we'll say, hey, there's now a flash array object, a flash array snapshot object, a volume, and so forth. So you can manage those, those objects in relation to whatever. And so that's that, the, that part of the plugin, the object, is what moves us into infrastructure as a service, right, uh, in a really nice way. So let's actually run these workflows and things like that from VRA. Instead of, instead of just VRO. So let's switch back here. So I've created my um, branded vRealize automation tenants, right? One of the requirements of being a pure storage employee is memorizing the hex code for our orange or the <laughs> RGB values, right? Um, if you don't know it, um, you better. Right? So let me log, log in here as an admin for my tenant. And I remembered my password. Awesome. All right. First thing I see in here is just, hey, have I run any workflows recently, right? You can get custom messages and so forth. And we won't do a whole workshop on VRealize Automation, so let's focus a little bit on, on the tasks at hand. So the design view is really where you're going to spend a lot of time while creating your catalog items, right? Mm -hmm. And catalog items are the things you give out to your end users to 
I want to request a VM, a data store, and that type of stuff. Um, there's a standard blueprints, and this is usually around VM provisioning and so forth, but then there's your infrastructure as a service, as mentioned before. I think it's sometimes referred to as anything as a service as well. Uh, inside of here is where you can create additional workflows to provision and manage the rest of your infrastructure, right? So whether that be basically anything outside of the VMware scope, right, right. is inside of, inside of this. So in the XAS blueprints, uh, you can import workflows um, from VRO, right? This looks familiar. We saw this before. Uh, pure storage, um, VMware and ESX and Flash Array workflows here. And we can choose a different workflow. Let's say, like, creating a VMFS data store on a new Flash Array volume, right? Common first workflow someone would mm. probably like. And the thing about this here, and this once again goes back to our custom objects, is that VRA understands the objects that are defined in VRO. Okay. And so you can manage and have those inputs, right? It sees the inputs for this workflow, a VMware cluster and a Flash Array, right? Those are the two objects. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, some information. Some and parameters names. for the object you can create. Yeah. And the outputs are, of course, the VMware data store, which gets created, and, of course, a Flash Array volume. So let's go ahead and move through the, uh, the import phase here. And we can customize a variety of things. We'll just keep it as default. Um, now, here is an important screen. So VRO has its own presentation layer. Um, and VRA pulls in that presentation layer of when you run the workflow and mm -hmm. allows you to edit it or change it, right? Because you may not want every user that runs this workflow to be able to choose a flash array, right? Maybe you want to narrow it down. So I'll do a drop down. Um, I'll go into my values here, do a predefined one, and I'll say, oh, I only want you to be able to use a certain array that I have registered. I'll apply that. And so now when this user runs it, they only have one array to choose from. Right? You can hard code it. You can make multiple options. You can let them choose anything. Um, you can make it dynamic. Right? There's new dynamic fields, like if user, then whatever. Right? Um, and you can customize things as needed. Of course, remove them entirely. Right? I don't want them to choose the size. It's always going to be 8 terabytes, so hard code it. Right? There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. So this is, in my opinion, one of the most important parts of this, screen, of this process, right? Mm -hmm. is what do you want this workflow to do after it's been run? Um, now, obviously, every time this workflow is going to create a volume in a data store, it's what it does. Um, maybe it'll fail, maybe it'll work, right? But what do you want it to then send back to that VRA user? Um, so this this workflow creates two things, right? A flash array volume and then a VMware yeah, data, store data store on top of it, right? So what would you, you know, um, as the requester, I'm probably going to want the data store back. I'm going to not really care about the, the, volume. the volume. Exactly, exactly, right? And so that's what I would probably choose the, the VMware data store. And we'll click next. And we can, there's a variety of other things you can have in here. So if you want to have a workload update that object, delete it, so forth. But we can just keep the defaults here just to keep things simple. And that'll import the workflow into, into vRealize Automation. So <clears throat> next step here is we can publish it. And that's going to add it to availability for me to then add into, um, into my catalog into for a yeah. set of users. So let's, uh, let's do that. The next step here is my catalog management and my catalog items. Mm -hmm. And see my create data store workflows here. We can configure it. And this is where you can add some cool stuff, right? If you have an icon, you can add it. Um, we actually have an icon pack for VRA. Right. Um, if you want to use our orange. Logo orange. Yeah. You yeah. Know, whatever, or just you know, put in pictures of me or something like that. If you have to make you laugh. Um, storage is a service, right? So I've created mm -hmm. a service, which is a collection of catalog items. So I, that's what I've called it, right? This isn't a hard-coded thing, but you can create different services for different mm -hmm. users and so forth. And if you want to make it really shine when they log in, I'll go Bring ahead it up front. and yep. put it up front. Pretty straightforward stuff. So. Okie dokes. Now that's been published, it's been added in. Um, in my catalog items, if my um, person logged in is, is, is part of that service, okay. and there's like a collection of groups and all kinds of stuff, you'll see this, this workflow um, inside of it. So let's, uh, let's run a workflow. Let's do that. Which one do you want to run? We have an add flash array, new flash array in my environment, or create data store? Well, we've just been playing with create a data store. Does it make sense to create a data store? Or, uh, or have you got an, an array I, that you haven't added no, yet? I have many arrays I haven't added, but <laughs> I figured I'd let you choose. <laughs> All right. I'm living dangerously. I feel this is a Hobson's choice situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead here and choose a vCenter. So no, I don't have a vCenter um, added. So I need to do that in VRO, right? So a lot of these resources um, are managed inside of vRealize Orchestrator. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and add a vCenter. So we'll go to um, the VMware workflows, vCenter, 
and configuration. And of course, this could be done inside of VRA as well, but we don't want it here for that. Okay, so I'll get my vCenter. Uh, orchestrate, go ahead and add, it looks correct. And we'll just add my user here. So this will add my vCenter um, and its inventory into, of course, the Realize Orchestrator, and then allow my end user inside of VRA to manage this as well. So let's go back to VRA. Rerun this request, and we'll choose my resource. There's my vCenter. Mm -hmm. Now the next step is I want to choose a cluster to actually cluster. push into. Yep. So here's my my cluster, and I'll select. And like I said, you can based on permissions, narrow that down, all kinds yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So I'll choose my flash array. If you remember, I hard coded it, and so I just got one. I knew one available. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll give it a name. We'll do Cody VRA data store. And we'll give it a um, size. What do you want to do? Well, if we're doing, let's do a four terabyte. Four terabyte, all yeah, right. Yeah, why not? Go ahead and submit. It's enough space to do something <laughs> useful with. So that'll that'll uh, that'll kick off our request, and we'll see that it's in progress, right? So we can watch it here. Uh, of course, in VRO, you can see that workflow run as well. So inside of vRealize Orchestrator, you can see up oh, there it goes, and now the workflow is actually running. Mm -hmm. uh, we can watch it kind of go through the steps. It's probably at the rescan. Oh, now it's on Create Data Store. This workflow um, will either create VMFS six if it's ESX six point five that cluster, or if it's not, then it'll do VMFS. Um, workflow has been completed, cool beans, and we can go back in here, and it takes usually a little bit of time to uh, return, oh, nope, it's already done, cool. Now we go to our and catalog. It's successful, I always like it when it's successful. I know, me too, me too. I actually, the workflow actually all it does is return successful no matter what. Um, so back in the catalog, I'm um, sorry, in the items, uh, we'll give it a refresh here. When you, when you provision a new item type, um, you have to either log in, log back out, or just go back into the the VMware portion of it. So here we go. And here's my data store. And since we have um, a data store, now what we want this user to do, right? Uh, we can say, oh, I want you to just be able to see the data store exists and that's good enough for you. Or you can actually say what they can do to this object type once they own it. Like create a virtual machine on it, which yeah. is probably why they wanted it in the first place. Exactly, right? Create a VM or create a flash array snapshot or restore from a snapshot or, you know, rename, whatever, right? Just mm -hmm. something to that object. But VM is you're good at the use cases. I mean, I keep saying things I don't really. Mean. I guess for easy stuff. <laughs> All right. So, and where does that come from? Well, there's one more portion here in infrastructure as a service. It's called resource action, right? And this is a very similar um, workflow as before. I can go here and pick a, you know, a pure storage or VMware workflow or whatever inside of my. Uh, we'll choose, let's say, create flash array snapshot of a VMFS data store. Mm -hmm. So, thing here is like takes in a VMware data store, right? Returns a snapshot. So click on next, um, input parameter, the VMware data store, good to go. That's basically, and the important thing here is this is what it's going to attach this workflow to that yeah. item type. What, what kind of object can be used as the trigger for this? Exactly, the, exactly. Start point for it. And this is another part here, am I actually okay. getting rid of this item? So if you choose disposal, that's gonna unregister that item from your VR inventory. Mm -hmm. If you choose provisioning, it's going to register whatever the output is. Uh, if you choose both, it's gonna, Replace probably you know, but you can you can certainly do either. So we'll do provisioning, um, and one of my outputs, right? So this creates two objects, right? It actually outputs the volume that we snapshotted, but also right. outputs the snapshot that we create, right? And this is something that that user might want to own. And so I'll say, yeah, snapshot sounds great. Next, and all I need to do is give a name, so that's cool, and finish. And so once that's been uh, once that's been provisioned, we can go back into our administration. I need to make sure I uh, enabled it uh, in my resource actions. Great snapshot, publish it. It's an easy step to miss. I just missed it. So administration, and then we can go into our catalog management and entitlements. Mm -hmm. Entitlements is, you know, spelled like it sounds, right? Um, it's basically who has entitlements to not only these services, right, that stores the service, but mm -hmm. also actions um, that you want them to run on objects if someone in that group owns this object, then these are the actions they can run on. Right. 
And I think that looks good. Um, in here as well, you can also entitle like add policy. So like if you want someone to approve a workflow, they can they can right. do it in there as well. And you can associate it with different whatever. So finish. And that'll add that to that entitlement. So we go back into our items here, our data store. Now we have a workflow I can run on that, right? And this will provision a snapshot and return that snapshot to my item inventory as well. So that's a kind of a crash course into some of the introductory parts of uh, infrastructure as a service and kind of what we're doing with with, uh, with the Flash Array on. And we're looking at uh, updating our VRO plugin to add some more custom object types mm -hmm. and more workflows in the coming months. So uh, we're definitely investing a lot of time and energy in the vRealize because it's a pretty cool set of products. And as you're getting into those larger scale customers, it becomes absolutely critical that you have this, this sort of automation and orchestration together. Absolutely, to absolutely. From I mean, environments. to manage these things at scale, right, you need orchestration, you need self-service, right, and you need and custom to, control, right? And that's what VRA yeah. does. It gives right, any kind of role-based access control and allocation limits based regardless of the underlying infrastructure. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Cody. It was thank good you. to see some of the integrations between the pure storage system and vRealize automation, and particularly vRealize orchestrator. Uh, stay tuned for more Build Day at Pure Storage.